Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janmadya Sayato Nivayat Itaratas Chate Swavigyaswara Janmadya Sayatam Bayari Taratas Chate Swavigyaswara Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikavaye Muyantiyat Surayaha Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikavaye Muyantiyat Surayaha Tejo Varimadam Yata Vinimayo Yatra Trisagomesha Tejo Varimadam Yata Vinimayo Yatra Trisagomesha Tam Nasvena Sadadi Rasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi Tam Nasvena Sadadi Rasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi O my Lord Sri Krishna, Son of Vasudeva O my Lord Sri Krishna, Son of Vasudeva O all pervading personality God O all pervading personality of God I offer my respectful obeisances unto you How from my respectful obeisance is unto you. I meditate <coughs> upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of manifested universe. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. <coughs> By him, uh, uh, land seen on water. only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of material nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction of the three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although I therefore unreal. meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute Dharma truth. Dharma Projita Kaitravutra. Dharma Projita Kaitravutra. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Vedyam Bastavam Atravastu. Vedyam Bastavam Atravastu. Shivadam Tapa Atrayon Mulan. Shivadam Taputra Yamaranam. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamonik. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamonik. Kimva Parir Ishwara. Kimva Parir Ishwara. Sadio Hidi Aburudhyate Tra. Sadio Hidi Aburudhyate Tra. Kriti Bihi Sushu Subhistakshana. Kriti Bihi Sushu Subhistakshana. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavat Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavat Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth, the reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare Such of all. Such truth uproots the threefold misery. Such truth uproots the threefold misery. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. It is sufficient in itself for God realization. It is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpataror galitam falam. Nigama kalpataror galitam falam. Sukumakad amrita dravya samyutam. Sukumakad amrita dravya samyutam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur ahoraska bhuvibhavaka. Muhur ahoraska bhuvibhavaka. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Shrimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Shrimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the Desire to Vedic literatures. The mature fruit desire to Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for including all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Shinvatam swak 
Sakata Krishna Shambhatam Sakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Punya Shravana Kirtana Hidyam Taksto Hi Bhadrani Hidyam Taksto Hi Bhadrani Vidhu Nati Surit Satam Vidhu Nati Surit Satam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita Or to hear from him directly through Bhagavad Gita Is it self-righteous activity? It is self-righteous activity And for one who hears about Krishna and for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart. Lord Krishna who is dwelling within everyone's acts heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. Acts as a best wishing and friend. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta praesu bhadrisu. Nasta praesu bhadrisu. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhaktir bhavati naistake. Bhaktir bhavati naistake. In this way, a devotee a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears knowledge. more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. And from the devotees. And from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in his devotional service. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Kamalo badayas chaye. Kamalo badayas chaye. Chita itaira navidam. Chita itaira navidam. Stitam satve prasiditi. By development of devotional service. By development of devotional service. <coughs> By development of devotional service, one becomes uh, freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lust and avarice are diminished. And thus, material lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasanna manaso. Evam prasanna manaso. Bhagavad bhakti yoga taha. Bhagavad bhakti yoga. Bhagavad tattva vijnanam. Bhagavad tattva vijnanam. Mukta sangha sijayate. Mukta sangha sijayate. When these impurities are wiped away. When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Chidyante sarvasam saya. Chidyante sarvasam saya. Shiyante shashikarmani. Shiyante shashikarmani. Just a lot money sware. Thus, Bhakti Yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. Thus, Bhakti Yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. And enables us to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Understanding of the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. Understanding the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing about uh, from Krishna or from his devotee. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna, from the in Krishna consciousness, in Krishna consciousness, can one understand the science of Krishna? Can one understand the science of Krishna? Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto One, Chapter Eighteen, Verse Number Six. Yasmin Hani Yarjeva. Yasmin Ahani Yarjeva. Bhagavan Utsajar. Utsa Sarja Jam Bhagavan Utsa Sarja Jam Tadai Vehanu Vrito Sav Tadai Vehanu Vrito Sav Adharma Prabhava Kali Adharma Prabhava Kali Translation by Srila Prabhupada The very day and moment the personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna, left this earth. The personality of Kali, who promotes all kinds of irreligious activities, came into this world. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. The personality of Godhead and His holy name, qualities, etc., are all identical. The personality of Kali was not able to enter the jurisdiction of earth due to the presence of the personality of Godhead. And similarly, if there is an arrangement for the constant chanting of the holy names, qualities, etc., of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, there is no chance at all for the Personality of Kali to enter. That is the technique of driving away the Personality of Kali from the world. In modernized human society, there are great advancements of material science. 
and they have invented the radio to distribute sound in the air. So instead of vibrating some nuisance sound for sense gratification, if the state arranges to distribute transcendental sound by resounding the holy name, fame, and activities of the Lord as they are authorized in the Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam, then a favorable condition <coughs> will be created. The principles of religion in the world will be reestablished. And thus, executive heads who are so anxious to drive away corruption from the world will be successful. Nothing is bad if properly used for the service of the Lord. So Prabhupada says, nothing is bad if properly used for the service of the Lord. So that is the purpose of Krishna consciousness. The purpose of Krishna consciousness uh, actually has been explained by Prabhupada uh, in a letter in a letter that was sent to to Ma Krishna Goswami Maharaj Prabhupada uh, um, to Ma Krishna Maharaj asked the question Prabhupada says you write to say that you do not know what is my desire but my desire is an open secret this is Prabhupada now I simply want all over the Western countries, people may take this simple formula of chanting, dancing, and eating Krishna Prashadam and being happy. I am simply surprised that they should not accept this simple formula and be happy themselves. My only desire is that all people become happy and prosperous in Krishna consciousness. My predecessors, Vaishnavas, they were so generous that they felt very much afflicted for the suffering of the human society. Srila Rupa Goswami tried to elevate them to real path of happiness by introducing this Govinda Ganamrita, the nectarine of the songs of Govinda. That will make them happy. So here we see the desire of Prabhupada and all the Vaishnava Charyas. And he's written extensively about this. What is his desire? What is Krishna's desire? What is uh, the desire of the great personalities uh, in, in history of the world, the great Acharyas? So he says that uh, the purpose of life, or one of the goals of life, is to give up attraction to sense gratification. That makes sense. Uh, sense gratification is the cause of uh, entrapment by maya. That's the way maya catches us when we become in interested in sense gratification. And Another purpose is uh, to get everyone engaged in devotional service because by devotional service you can understand Krishna. So, in a uh, very nice verse in Bhagavad Gita, uh, the uh, uh, fifth chapter, what verse is it? Hmm. Too many papers. Yeah, anyway, fifth chapter, twelfth verse, where Prabhupada, uh, where Krishna says, Yukta karma falam tyakva santim apno tinaistikim. Ayukta karma karena fale sakto nibadyate. The steadily devoted soul attains unadulterated peace because he offers the result of all activities to me. Whereas a person who is not in union with the divine, who is greedy 
for the fruits of his labor becomes entangled. So, this is an important verse, just like all the verses of Bhagavad Gita, but this is important today in this sense. Prabhupada writes in a purport, the difference between a person in Krishna consciousness and a person in bodily consciousness is that the former is attached to Krishna, whereas the latter is attached to the results of his activities. A person who is attached to Krishna and works for him only is certainly a liberated person, and he has no anxiety over the results of his work. In the Bhagavatam, the cause of anxiety over the result of an activity is explained as being one's functioning in a conception of duality, that is, without knowledge of the absolute truth. Krishna is the supreme absolute truth, the personality of Godhead. In Krishna consciousness, there is no duality. All that exists is a product of Krishna's energy, and Krishna is all good. Therefore, activities in Krishna consciousness are on the absolute plane. They are transcendental and have no material effect. One is therefore filled with peace in Krishna consciousness, but one who is entangled in profit calculation for sense gratification cannot have that peace. This is the secret of Krishna consciousness. Realization that there is no existence besides Krishna is the platform of peace and fearfulness. So this is a very important purport. And uh, to understand this purport, uh, the key, well, one key phrase is that the uh, devotee functions without the sense of duality. How is that possible? It's because that all that exists is a product of Krishna's energy and Krishna's all good. Hmm. Now what does that mean exactly? Well, that means that uh, Krishna is the source of everything, point one. Janmada sayata. So, aham sarva si prabhava matak sarva prabhavatate iti matva bhajante mam buddha bhava saman vitaha. So, everything is coming from Krishna. He is, the, he is the original origin of all things, material and spiritual. Okay, so, then what comes from Krishna? Well, Paramatma comes from Krishna. Paramatma is present in every atom of the material universe and in the heart of every living entity in the material universe. Paramatma, by the way, is not present in the spiritual world because Krishna is present there in his original form and his expansions as Narayana. But Paramatma is present in the material world. Okay, and what else is coming from Krishna, the Brahma Jyoti. And the Brahma Jyoti is everywhere in the spiritual world and the material world. So therefore, uh, there's no question of duality for the devotee because he seeks Krishna in everything. Duality begins when you separate Krishna from things. That's what the Mayavadis do. They say that there's a difference between Brahman and Krishna. That's called duality. You see. Because of that duality, people get confused. And they develop anxiety, doubt, fear. Just like the Mayavadis, they must retire from society, because they think that interaction with people and situations is maya. But you don't see Krishna telling Arjuna to retire from society. He's saying, you got to get involved. You have to act. But Maya bodies, they want to stop action. They want to stop thought. They want to stop interpersonal relationships and meditate alone 
eventually in some cave or somewhere and then merge into some indefinite in, in the uh, uh, non-descriptive uh, oneness. So they are in duality, although they preach everything is one. But the devotee does not have that duality. The devotee thinks that everything is one in the sense that everything is coming from Krishna. Or as it says in this, the key phrase it says, all that exists is a product of Krishna's energy and Krishna is all good. Therefore, activities in Krishna consciousness are on the absolute plane. They are transcendental and have no material effect. One is therefore filled with peace in Krishna consciousness. But one who's entangled in profit calculation for sense gratification. What Prabhupada says, the de desire to merge into Brahman is the ultimate sense gratification. Now, how can you say that? Because the Mayavadis, they have to reject everything. Well, yeah, they're rejecting everything in the material world to get a higher sense gratification by merging into Brahman. Whereas the devotees, they become free of all sense gratification by offering everything to Krishna. But one who is entangled in profit calculation for sense gratification cannot have that peace. This is the secret of Krishna consciousness. Realization that there is no existence besides Krishna is the platform for peace and fearlessness. So this one purport, you have the most uh, well, you have the explanation of achintya, beda, abeda, tattva. That the absolute truth is inconceivably and simultaneously one and different. So, the devotees also believe in oneness. Yeah. That bhavanam janmanam ante gyanavam mampapadyante vasudeva sarvam iti samahatma sudurlava. After many, many births of, and, uh, of, of deaths, uh, of, of speculation, eventually one comes to the conclusion, Vasudeva Saramiti. Let's, let's exactly read what that means, Vasudeva Saramiti. It means, oh Krishna, you are everything. Well, uh, it says, after many births and deaths, one who is actually in knowledge, surrenders unto me, knowing me to be the cause of all causes and all that is. Such a great soul is very rare. So this is why the devotee has, sees oneness. He doesn't see, uh, he sees Krishna in everything. He's the origin, origin of everything, everything is coming from him. The, Pramaj uh, the Paramatma is, is coming from him. The Brahma Jyoti is coming from him. Therefore, Krishna is everything. But everything is not Krishna. Because in the Brahma Jyoti and Paramatma, you don't have the flute playing of Krishna. You don't have Rasa Leela of Krishna. You don't have Krishna being scolded by Mother Yasoda, Yasoda or tied up by him. Or you don't have so many things. So, Krishna is everything, but everything is not Krishna. So you cannot say that Paramatma is Krishna, but Paramatma is the energy of Krishna. It's coming from him. And it's non-different than him in certain, in many ways. And you cannot say Brahma Jyoti is Krishna, but it is his energy. It's coming from him. And you cannot say that the living entities are Krishna, but yet they're coming from him and there is energy. So they are simultaneously and inconceivably one and different. But Krishna is always one. So here we have these different verses in Bhagavad Gita that have an extremely deeper meaning than what seems to be on the surface. But the main thing is Ishwara Parama Krishna, Sat Chitananda Vikra, Anadir Adir Govinda, Sarva Karana Karanam. The main thing is Sarva Karana Karanam. 
he's the cause of all causes. That means that he is at, he is one and different. He's one with everything and also different from everything. So the devotee seeing this, understanding this, after a long time, you don't understand it right away because it's such a profound and subtle understanding. But when you begin to understand it properly through devotional service, through regular hearing from bona fide devotees, through regular hearing uh, the prayers of bona fide devotees that are in the Srimad Bhagavatam, by regular hearing Krishna's words directly in the Bhagavad Gita, spoken correctly by genuine devotees, little by little you begin to understand that there is oneness and difference. But that oneness it makes you free from duality. But the symptom of people's attachment to the material world through fear, anxiety, and hopes for sense gratification is based on duality. <clears throat> okay, so, but there's more to this, obviously. So in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Naiva kinchit karo miti yukto man yeta tatvavit pasyam shinvam sparsan jigran asnan gachan swapan swasan palapan vrishrijan grinam unmishan nimisan api indriyan indriyarte su vartanta iti darayan this is a very important verse. They're all important because they're all spoken by Krishna, so each one is important. A person in the divine consciousness, although engaged in seeing, hearing, touching, smelling, eating, moving about, sleeping, and breathing, always knows within himself that he actually does nothing at all. Now, you try and convince someone that they're actually doing nothing at all. They'll say, you're crazy. What are you talking about? I built up this company. I built this building. I did this. I have a big uh, 401k. I have uh, uh, 15 different doctorates and, uh, and degrees. And uh, I am a member of this uh, organization, the World uh, uh, Organization for Peace, and this thing. They'll go through a list. They'll say, how can you say I didn't do anything? But Krishna is saying, <laughs> actually does nothing at all because while speaking, evacuating, receiving, or opening or closing his eyes, he always knows that only the material senses are engaged with their objects and that he is aloof from them. Wow, that means there's a difference between the body and the person. Now, the person said, no, 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 I don't accept. This is not, I did all these things. How can you take it away from me? I did this, I did that. How can you say I didn't do these things? But yet Krishna is saying it. So let's read the purport. Prabhupada says, a person in Krishna consciousness is pure in his existence, and consequently, he has nothing to do with the work which depends upon five immediate and remote causes. What are those? That is, okay, now there's two ways, of, uh, several ways of saying these five things. I'll say, uh, I, w I won't read what's here yet, but the, the normal way of saying it is there's the body, the senses, the person or the soul, the endeavor, and there's Krishna. Those are five causes. But here, Prabhupada says, the doer, the work, the situation, the endeavor, and fortune. Now, if you hear this, would you understand the same thing as the first five that I gave? The fortune is the divine. Huh? Yes. And then the doer. The doer is the person. The work? The work is the, the action. No, it's the senses. So, and the situation is? 
The body. The body. Right? So the body, the senses, the person, the endeavor, and God. So, <laughs> so why does he say the work means the senses? Uh, well, because you cannot, uh, you have two types of senses, the, not, not, the knowledge acquiring senses and the work sense, working uh, senses. So therefore, those two things together, plus the mind, is the work. You do the work with those things. Okay. And the situation is the body. So there's a difference between the senses and the body. It's just like, is there a difference between the chassis, the wheels, the steering wheel, the motor, and the battery? Yeah. You can have all those things, but if the battery is not there, they're not going to work. So in the same way, you can have the body, but if you don't have the senses in the body, it's not going to be able to do much. Right? Then the two, and the two types of senses that you're talking about are the senses uh, for acquiring knowledge or senses of perception and the senses that are for work. Yeah. And then the mind. If you have, I mean, some people, did you know that some people are born without a mind? Did you know that? Yeah. There's a lot of them walking around also. You know? <laughs> no, there are actually people that are born without a mind. They don't last very long. Uh, you know. <laughs> so, uh, so Prabhupada continues. He said, this is because he is engaged in the loving transcendental service of the Lord. That means a person in Krishna consciousness is pure in his existence and consequently he has nothing to do with any work which depends upon five immediate and remote causes. The doer, the work, the situation, the endeavor and fortune. This is because he's engaged in the loving transcendental service of the Lord. Ah, so, therefore, there is a major difference between work for sense gratification and work for Krishna. Big, big difference, although it may look similar, like going to the bank and putting money in the bank, going to the grocery store and buying food, going to work, waking up, going to sleep, Passing stool and urine, eating. Now, the devotee is doing all those things and the person engaged in sense gratification is doing all those things. So what makes the difference? The difference is the devotee is always offering the result to Krishna. And at the same time, he's always thinking about Krishna. And he's glorifying Krishna. And he's worshiping Krishna. And he, he or she, and and he's uh, serving the desires of the Lord, understood through bona fide uh, acharyas and, and, and gurus. So, in material consciousness, the senses are engaged in sense gratification, but in Krishna consciousness, the senses are engaged in the satisfaction of Krishna's senses. Therefore, the Krishna conscious person is always free even though he appears to be engaged in the affairs of the senses. Act, and so someone would say, wait a minute, that's double talk. What's he talking about? He's free, although he's engaged in the, uh, I, don't, I don't accept this. <laughs> you see. Activities such as seeing and hearing are actions of the senses meant for receiving knowledge, whereas moving, speaking, evacuating, etc., are actions of the senses meant for work. A Krishna conscious person is never affected by the actions of the senses. He cannot perform any act except in the service of the Lord because he knows that he is the eternal servitor of the Lord. So this is profound philosophy. And most people would say, this is a bunch of double talk. I don't, I don't, I don't even know. I, I think it's, the, it's, the, it's a bunch of gobbledygook. Cause he's just repeating himself. Uh, I don't understand what he's saying. But actually, you have to be a devotee to understand what's being said here. 
That means you have to have experience of chanting Hare Krishna, waking up early, coming to Mangalarti, listening to the classes, doing service, dedicating your life, your body, your words. Uh, as the statement, Diya uh, uh, Vacha, anyway, you, you dedicate your, your body, your words, your mind and your energy. That means kaya, kaya mana vacha. Kaya mana and vacha. Mm. Three things, huh? No, it's some, a little bit, well, it's close, but it's a little bit different. There's four words. But anyway, that means there's four things. Okay. So now the next verse adds even more information. It says, one who performs his duty without attachment, surrendering the results unto the Supreme Lord, is unaffected by sinful action as the lotus leaf is untouched by water. Well, can you perform your duty without attachment? Mm -hmm. But that was what Krishna was trying to tell Arjuna. Arjuna was attached to his family. But... Here you see his family is on both sides of the battle, so he cannot uh, function properly if he's attached to the bodies of his family members. But if he's attached to Krishna, then he can do his... Uh, just like, let's say you're a heart surgeon and your father has a heart attack. So they bring him into your, uh, your surgery room. You have your mask on, you have your gloves on, and you have the scalpel in your hand. And now you have to cut open your father. Can you do it? Uh, normally, they would not let a person, a doctor or a surgeon, operate on their family member, right? Because they might hesitate, or if they make a mistake, they might hate themselves for the rest of their life, you know. But if somebody else comes and cuts open and makes a mistake, well, you know, that's part of, part of the, the daily routine. <laughs> See? So uh, they probably would not let, unless there's an absolute emergency, there's nobody else available, then they would, they would do it. But see, are you able to cut open your father? take out his heart, operate on it, put it back in again, it, it, would be, it would be difficult, right? You would have to be detached to be able to do that. Or to operate on your own child, whatever. So you see, this Krishna conscious person is never affected by the actions of the senses. He cannot perform any act except in the service of the Lord because he knows that he is the eternal servitor of the Lord. So the next point is performing one's duty without attachment. So Prabhupada says, and now this is a very, very complicated purport. He says, here Brahmani, in this verse, means in Krishna consciousness. So the first line says, Brahmanyadaya Karmani. So this Brahmani, he says, means in Krishna consciousness. <clears throat> so it says the material world is a sum total manifestation of the three modes of material nature technically called pradana the Vedic hymns sarvam hi etad brahma mandukya upanishad and tasmat etad brahma nama rupam Anam Chajayate Mundaka Upanishad and in the Bhagavad Gita Mama Yunir Mahad Brahma indicate that everything in the material world is a manifestation of Brahman. And although the effects are differently manifested, they are non different from the cause. So that's my point. That's the point being made here. Krishna is the source of everything. That includes Paramatma, 
that includes the Brahman effulgence. So, therefore, uh, it's said that, uh, that everything in the material world is a manifestation of Brahman. And although the effects are differently manifested in the form of Paramatma, or Brahman, or Brahma Jyoti, or living entities, or material nature, all those things are coming from Krishna. They are non different from the cause. So here we see the difference between the material world and the spiritual world. We see a difference between the cause and the effect. Whereas in the spiritual world, there's no difference between the cause and effect. And actually in this material world also, but people don't see it like that. They, they see cause and effect. And that causes duality and that causes confusion. Just like if uh, they catch a person who committed a murder, but they don't have direct evidence that he did that. But they're pretty sure he did it. So how can they prove in a court that he's actually the murderer? Well, they have to give what's called circumstantial evidence. There's no witness, and there might not even be a body. But there's circumstantial evidence. Like one time, while he was uh, talking with a friend of his, he admitted that he killed his wife. So that witness comes. And another time, uh, he was the last person that was with his wife. Uh, that's another circumstantial evidence. It's not absolutely foolproof, but it, so, so the more of those things that they can collect, the more circumstantial evidence they can collect, they might be able to make a case to convince 12 people on the jury that he's the murderer. Then if they have some DNA or evidence or they have uh, they found a hair in his car that was from his wife, or they found a drop of blood in the car that was from his wife, but whatever. So they, they, this is all called circumstantial evidence. Why? Because they have to have that cause and effect. And then they find out that he was cheating on his wife and she found out about it, and there was a big argument a week before she disappeared. So all that is circumstantial evidence. There's no witness, there's no body. But there's a lot to make one believe that he actually did it. So they have to find cause for the effect in order to prove their case. If there's no motive, there's no body, there's no witness, there's no evidence at all, circumstantial or real, then they can't convict the person. And there are people that get away with things. They're, they're arrested, they go to trial, but there was not enough evidence, either circumstantial or real, they have to let the person go. Is it? So it's confused, cause and effect is confusing in the material world. But for a devotee, cause and effect are one. It's all Krishna. Therefore, the devotee does not have any confusion trying to figure things out. Just like if you're in the middle of a forest fire and you say, I'm not moving till I figure out how I got into this mess. Well, what would happen? You would probably die. <laughs> right? So when you try and figure out cause and effect in the material world, it's confusing. Sometimes it's not possible. But a devotee says, well, it couldn't have happened unless Krishna permitted it. So there must be some plan here. I don't know exactly what the Lord wants, but I'll be patient. And while I'm patient, I'll continue chanting my rounds and following the regulative principles and worshiping the deity and preaching and distributing prasadam and so forth. So there's no duality for the devotee. It doesn't interrupt. Whereas another person, they say, oh my God, my father's dead, and, and we're not quite sure who did it, and I'm, I'm gonna spend the rest of my life to try and find out who did that. Well, okay, you can re spend the rest of your life, you may find out, you may not find out, but in the meantime, you forgot all about Krishna, you see. 
So for the devotee, there's no duality. For the karmis, duality is confusing them all the time and keeping them entangled. Okay, okay so this is a, I'm not gonna continue. I'll, I'll continue this tomorrow. There's a lot more about this. So are there any questions so far? Uh, could you say this is uh, also the, the, um, the philosophy of uh, action and seeing action in inaction and inaction in action? Well, it's related to it. <laughs> huh? It's all related, yes. Means like if you, you may be engaged in doing so many things, acting in so many ways, but as long as for uh, as long as in in, in uh, for Krishna's pleasure, in devotional service, those actions they are in action actually, because they don't they don't um, produce any uh, create any reaction. Karmic, re re uh, karmic karma. if, uh, yeah. reactions. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, because the devotee is, is functioning in the principle of oneness. Mm. Everything is coming from Krishna, so he doesn't have to uh, get confused why did this happen he's just concerned about serving the Lord he's doing his duty so one who performs his duty without attachment surrendering the results unto the supreme Lord. It's just like one time this one person came to the temple he was really interested in Krishna consciousness so we were talking and I said, well, you can join the temple and uh, take up devotional service. He said, no, 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 no. I want to first learn Sanskrit. I, I said, it's not, it's not necessary to know Sanskrit. <laughs> Prabhupada's translator, no, 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 no. I got to know Sanskrit. I got to make sure it's right. <laughs> well, you see, he's making this condition that's, that's not re really required. Of course, he probably got poisoned by the... Uh, uh, Arya Samaj, which says that you have to know Sanskrit first <laughs> before you can even begin to read the Vedas, right? So you see, this is all, all, all duality, right? Prabhupada made it simple. You don't have to know Sanskrit. I, I can show you letters where he writes where devotees have been sent to Bengal to preach, and they say, well, Prabhupada, should we study Bengali? You know, he said, no, it's not necessary. <laughs> so, but we're preaching in Bengal. He said, it's not necessary. Just... <laughs> Make one Bengali devotee and he can translate for you. <laughs> you see, uh, so people make these impossible demands on themselves, right? And because of that, they end up not being able to come to Krishna consciousness. This guy, he, he was crazy. I said, you don't have to. I mean, Prabhupada translated the law. I said, no, I don't know for sure. <laughs> So, you know, you can't say anything. You know? And then another person, one time, was talking to this other person. He found out about me through the Internet. And he was saying, well, I'm really interested in this Krishna consciousness. I said, okay. I said, why don't you come and live with us? No, 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 I can't do that. I said, okay, well, well, you can study from home. I said, uh, and you have any questions? Uh, you should get the Bhagavad Gita. He said, no, 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 I don't want to get the Bhagavad Gita. I said, you don't want to get the, I mean, that's Krishna speaking. No, 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 I, I got to do it on my own. <laughs> I, I said, well, wait a minute. I said, why'd you call me up then? <laughs> do, do it on your own. You'll never get anywhere, but do it on your own. See, you see, this, this is a crazy people. They make these crazy demands on themselves. And, and they, just, they just, you know, jump out the window thinking they're going to, you know, fly through the air. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> There's no answer, Prabhu. <laughs> They're already convinced. They convinced themselves. I said, do you remember choosing to be born? What would he say? Huh? No. I said, so, therefore, how are you going to figure out everything? You can't even figure out whether you chose to be born or not. They're kind of crazy people. You know, they're right? crazy. They're absolutely <laughs> crazy. Obviously, there's or, things that they don't know. How are they going to figure them out? Oh, their ego is so thick, you know? Ego, you know? Yeah. It's all false ego. 
Yeah, exactly. Exactly right. Okay, all glories are sure. We'll continue with this tomorrow. This is an uh, interesting subject. <laughs> <laughs> On the other hand, yesterday and Sunday,